What's going on guys? It's Gendo here, and welcome to episode 29 for the love of the game. And right here at the end of January, right near the end of the transfer window, Queens Park are seeing themselves in fourth place, 35 points through 23 matches. We are eight points behind Forfar, who have opened up a gap between us. 10 points behind Cowan Beef and 13 points behind the league leaders, Burrick. We are only one point ahead of Albion Rovers for that fourth and final playoff spot. So we need to do as best we can to try and hold that going down the stretch. Let's take a look and see how we've gotten this far. And as you can see, since our last live com, our double live com of four far and Clyde, in the 10 matches we played, we've won four, drawn three, and lost three. Immediately following Clyde, we faced off against Burrick, the league leaders, and only lost to them 1-0. Felt that uh, on the day, neither side was very impressive, and ultimately could have ended up in a 0-0 draw if it wasn't for an early goal by Paul Kelly for Burrick, in the fourth minute, in fact. So other than that, it was pretty evenly matched throughout the day. Unfortunately, didn't come away with a single point. We then followed that up with a 5-2 drubbing away from home against East Sterlingshire. Four scorers on the day, as Andy McKinnon, Steven Davidson, Ryan Waters, and Jack Downey picking himself up a brace were all the goal scorers. 19 shots, 11 on target. Quite even possession between the two, but ultimately, all those shots taken on net ultimately led to those five goals. Just kept peppering their goalkeeper. And that's all you really need to do. And then follow that up with a two-all draw versus Dumbarton. Danny McNulty and Jack Downey, the odd goal scorers on the day. Jack Downey, yes, this is his third goal in two matches. However, Danny McNulty doesn't usually get all that much playing time. And I believe this was on a corner kick, more than likely, because he's center back. Uh, unfortunately, we did give up two goals after that as Dumbarton scored in the 30th and 67th. And we couldn't make uh, we couldn't make do with the chances we had with our 10 shots. Only three of them were on target. Two of those were goals. Felt that we could have put him more on target. However, it wasn't to be. We then lost away from home 3-0 against Morton. Liam Baxter from Morton picking himself up a hat trick, just making a mockery of our defensive line as Andy McLean and Christian Gibson not playing very well altogether. Only 11 shots, three on target, didn't have majority possession, but overall it was a bunch of yellow cards, a bunch of fouls for us, and ultimately nothing happening for us. No points. We did follow that up with a victory against Albion Rovers, 3-1 at home. Steven Davidson with a brace, Ryan Waters picking up a, uh, a goal in the 58th minute. 12 shots, 7 on target, majority possession. It's more than likely how you're supposed to do it, but sometimes we get poachers' efforts like, <clears throat> like this one here in Cowdenbeath. Our only goal coming in the third minute, which was our only shot on target, but then Cowdenbeath just laid a train on our defense, scoring four throughout the rest of the day. And ultimately, the 22 shots and 10 on target just wasn't, uh, it wasn't enough for our defense to handle as they just came through us and they showed that they were the better side on the day. After that though, we have not lost a match in four, winning two and drawing two, starting off with a 3-0 victory versus Turf United, relegation tip Turf United at that. Andy McKinnon picking up a two minute brace, scoring within the first few seconds of the match and then immediately off the kickoff, stealing the ball and scoring, making it a quick 2-0. And then Darren O'Brien picking himself up his second goal for the club in the 76th minute. 27 shots taken, 7 on target. Not all concerned about the amount of possession. And then follow that up with a draw away from home to Forfar. Two all. And unfortunately, Kenny Kane, who was in my who I was in his ear, actually, because he scored an own goal, giving Forfar their first goal, and probably. If that own goal didn't go in, we more than likely would have won straight out. So Forfar had to cobble together something in the last few minutes of the match and ultimately scored the match evener, the match leveler, in the 90th minute. On our side, Callum Hovarth and Darren O'Brien picking up the goals for us, relatively even in terms of shooting and in possession. The goal fest continues as this time it was a 3-all draw versus the league leaders of Burrick. 
at home. Steven Davidson picking himself up a hat trick, a very late hat trick at that. And it was a very back and forth match in the last 15 minutes. Steven Davidson picking up two goals there in the 78th and 83rd. Burrick had to answer back both times, as in the 81st minute, Dougie Marr picking up one, and then uh, the eventual match ender, as Darren Lavery picking up a goal in the 85th minute off of a penalty to end the score at 3-3. Once again, another even match in terms of scoreline and in possession. And then finally, against our rivals Clyde, we defeated them 1-0 away from home. Andy McKinnon, the lone scorer on the day, as Christian Gibson picking up a very superficial injury. Overall, even shots, even shots on target, even possession, just even throughout, we were very lucky that we were able to score a goal to prevent another draw. Three straight draws in three matches. Not all that good. Definitely wouldn't have helped with the confidence and definitely wouldn't have put us in the spot where we are right now. I figure that down the line, it's going to be down to us and Albion Rovers fighting out for that fourth and final playoff spot. But before we get into the matches today of Dumbarton and East Sterlingshire, we must go over the transfer news because we are in the transfer window. And yes, once again, a couple of our players have been poached away. Taking a look at some of the transfers, you take a look at those out. And the first one you notice is Scott Buchan, our 17-year-old goalkeeper, has been taken away from us by Ross County. And I really hope that he's doing well at Ross County, but uh, they don't want to play him. And he says it's in uh, their starting lineup, but uh, they just haven't played any of his matches, which is really unfortunate because he is a really nice goalkeeper and definitely one for the future. 17 years old. I'm trying to bring him back, trying to loan him back in, but uh, so far, Ross County are not willing to give him up. Then we had Neil Higgins go to Falkirk, another youth prospect. He was 16 years old and uh, obviously picked up away by Falkirk. And then Ross County came in and snatched up another player from us, Alan Mitchell, a 16-year-old center mid who, quite honestly, probably wasn't going to do much at the squad, so hopefully he'll do better there. Though with the loss of Scott Buchan, that uh, took away all my uh, actual gold star goalkeepers. I'm, I was left with Stephen Barr, who was just scratching a half gold star. So I had to go out and pick up some goalkeepers on free. And if you take a look here, the two goalkeepers that I picked up on the exact same day were Greg Fleming and Chris Kettings. Taking a look first at Greg Fleming, he's a 34-year-old Scotsman. And a rather good player, in fact, uh, is definitely a lot faster than both Kettings and Buchan are. With a yeah six in pace, and nine acceleration, but twelve in agility. His shot stopping ability is really good. Thirteen with reflexes. Great positioning, great mentals. So right now he is definitely going to be taking over as my starting goalkeeper. But I do want to get in some reps from Chris Kettings. You take a look at him. Yes, he is only 28 years old and definitely not as fast as the other two. That's where he's lacking. However, he is better in terms of mentals as well as communication. Shot stopping is a little better as well. 13 with the command and area, 13 with the reflexes, 11 with one-on-ones. But like I said, the one thing that is lacking on his side is the pace. He's got a four in acceleration, eight in pace. Definitely not as fast as Fleming, but like I said, I'm going to try and rotate in those goalkeepers just to you know, give them some even playing time since they both are pretty even. All right, so let's get into today's matches. First, we are going to be at home versus Dumbarton, and they're going to be coming out with a 4-5-1 formation. We're sticking with our 5-2-3, and the lineup for today is that Chris Kettings in net for his debut. McLean, McNulty, and Gibson in the back three. The two wing backs are Hovarth and Kelly. Two center mids will be Kenny Kane and Steve Mullen. And the three up front, Waters, Davidson, and McKinnon. Let's keep this run going. Four matches unbeaten. I'd like to get a win. Draw's fine too, but let's try not to get a loss. Let's keep in fourth place. So let's kick off and see what happens. All right, and we kick off. We are going to be in the black and white hoops. A little bit of a kick clash almost as Dumbarton are coming out in all whites. But you can tell the, the two of us apart, if only for a little bit. Steven Davidson picking up a knock early doesn't really affect him all that much, it looks like. 
almost 20 minutes gone though time is really flying by here we get a deep throw in McLean into Kenny Kane who throws it in but nobody's there on the end of it we do keep possession though with McNulty having to go all the way back and then tr throws it all the way forward to Waters Waters making a very bad cross slash shot as it's picked up easily by the Dumbarton keeper it's one thing that's been a, a big problem this season and that has been possession of the ball as you've noticed with a lot of the matches that I've shown, we always lose the possession battle, where we, it would be even to maybe about 5 to 7% in advantage of the, the opponent, just because we don't know how to hold on to the ball. We just throw it forward. And I don't try to play that type of, of uh, football. Well, hold on a second. Waters with a shot and a goal. Queens Park up 1-0 after 42 minutes right before halftime. That's always good to have. Three minutes of stoppage time going into halftime. However, nothing comes of that. I was a little concerned there that something could have happened, but it easily goes into halftime. Now, as I was saying, we, we usually gift possession to the opponents, and that's not the type of football that I try to play. Um, with 5-2-3, I'm trying to, to develop play through the middle, have those wingbacks come up, act as um, wide midfielders as well, try to give the two center mids some support. And it's just not it's just not working to how I want it to be. You know, instead of being a type of possession controlling type of football, it's just throw a ball forward, see what happens. It's, it's a type of hoof ball that I need to try and limit. And I've been tweaking some of the instructions, tweaking some of the, uh, the roles from the formation around. But in the end, I am still getting the results. And I hope I continue getting the results here today as everything is doing okay. Just keep it up. But it is something I do need to address going forward if I want to, if I do, in fact, go up into the championship or face higher ranked opponents, I need to develop a better formation. I need to develop a better strategy. What? That was an own goal. Dumbarton getting, that was a short angle shot that was tapped in by our defender that should be credited as an own goal. Either way, I'm not too pleased about that whatsoever man more from our boys that should not have happened we do get the ball here Hovarth to Malin through the center 63 minutes gone here's that possession I was talking to you about we're switching the ball to the flanks trying to play it through the center and just finding the strikers up front like that Steven Davidson picking himself up a goal after picking up a knock as well 2-1 after 64 minutes, Queens Park are back on top. And right now I'm seeing two center mids that aren't looking all that hot. Stephen Mullen is going to come off for Ross Daugherty. I'm going to debate about keeping Kenny Kane on for now. Though if it turns out he's super knackered, super tired, I'm going to bring him off. And he's looking exactly that. So Martin McNiff is going to come on for Kenny Kane. And, well, unfortunately, I'm going to have to play a defender out of position. So this is Martin McNiff. Actually, undo Martin McNiff for Kane Kane. McNiff is going to come out for Christian Gibson. And then sitting in the center mid role is going to be Kenny O'Brien. Yes, he usually plays out in the wings or in the striker position. But today he's going to be playing center mid just to try and hold up play. With 20 minutes to go, and oh great. Something I didn't want to see, another one of my players off injured. And uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Kelly down here. We're going to have to start. We're going to have to play like so. Actually, yeah, we're going to have to play like this and drop it back counter, get rid of all the attacking based um, strategies. So no push higher up. Play narrow though. Drop deeper. 
split the middle, get rid of those. All right. And actually be more disciplined. So we're going to have to go through these last 15 minutes with just 10 men on the pitch. Nine men on the pitch. What the hell is going on here? They're killing our guys. Kane's out injured. Gibson's out injured. Mullins out injured. Now Waters is out injured. Oh, I'm sorry. Not the, well, Davidson has picked up a knock. Uh, I was just going to say the other three were just subbed out. But that's two injuries. Now i got to deal with this last 12 minutes with nine men on the pitch and so far it looks like they're doing well four minutes of stoppage time mcniff actually getting a free kick what <laughs> we get a goal we get a goal with nine men on the pitch in the second minute of stoppage time and that's a is essentially going to be the game capper three one to queen's park and danny kelly picks up a knock as well geez dumb barton are killing our guys absolutely killing our guys if they can't win they're going to try and decimate our squad. Though it doesn't matter at this point. Queens Park have overcome the odds. And even scoring with nine men on the pitch. McKinnon may make it four here, which would be absolutely hilarious. But it's a shot stopped by the Dumbarton keeper. It should be the last kick of the game as we are six minutes into the four minutes allotted of stoppage. Still going. O'Brien out on the wing. Just killing time here. Daugherty taking a weak shot. That would have been amazing if he would have netted that. Two goals with nine men on the pitch would have been absolutely hilarious. And when is the ref going to blow this whistle? Because we are well past the end of stoppage time, past the end of the allotted stoppage time. And there it is, full time. Queens Park being Dumbarton 3-1 with Queens Park picking up a goal with nine men on the pitch. Good win for us. Definitely a good win for us coming back and ultimately getting the victory. However, there are concerns on the pitch. And that is all of the knocks that all my players picked up. Who is going to be out? And yeah, Nine Man Queens Park Triumph against the odds. Thumbs up to that. Danny Kelly is out for two weeks. Okay, not all that bad. Steven Davidson out three to four. Of course, my top goal scorer is out for a prolonged period of time. In three, four weeks, I think we can get by with him being out. I do have plenty other strikers that I can choose from, but uh, you know, him not being here will put a little damper on what we're trying to do. But we'll be, I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see what we do as the transfer window is nearing its end. When we come back, it'll be the match against East Sterlingshire. Transfer window would have already passed, so we'll see if any other players are poached away from our side. So don't go anywhere, and we'll be right back. So the transfer window is over now, and we did in fact make a signing right before the deadline day, taking a look at who we brought in. And his name is John Watson. He is a, a, a loanee actually from Dundee. It's not a full signing, no free transfers. He is a loanee in from Dundee, 18 years old, can play center mid, cam, and defensive mid. More than likely going to be using him in that center mid role. But in case I put it in a formation where we have a DM or a cam, he's more than likely going to take up that spot. Overall, he looks pretty solid. Uh, his pace is an 8, agility 9, acceleration 10. He's got decent mentals, technically sound where I really want him to be with a 12 in passing and a 12 in technique. Um, I don't know. I took a look at my scouting, and he seemed to be the best option available in terms of center mid. Uh, and, of course, me bringing in a center mid means I had to offload another center mid. And the guy who got the axe today was Stephen Mullen. Stephen Mullen, uh, the worst center mid in terms of average rating in five starts, 12 appearances overall. He only picked up a 6.63 fouled more times than he should have, didn't score a goal, didn't assist on any goal, and quite honestly just wasn't doing his part for the club. Yes, he did have a nice bit of pace on him, but couldn't really say much else apart from that. So that's why he got the axe and why John Watson has taken over his spot. Other players that left right on deadline day, Ryan Hutchin was gone on a free transfer because, well, 
he was raising a stink and he wasn't going to be part of my squad and Jamie Gallagher got picked up by Queen of the South he's a 17 year old center mid who as you can see by his stats I really wasn't going to be playing him so if Queen of the South want him try and develop him go have at it because I wasn't going to use him all right so now we can finally get into our match versus East Sterling sure so don't go away we'll be right back all right and here we are for the second match of the day Queens Park versus East Sterling shirt will be played at Hampton Park and 693 people are going to be coming out to witness this match East Sterling sure with a 4411 very interesting to see them come out with that and we're deviating from our uh, normal 523 formation we're going to be coming out with a 451 and yeah you may be thinking well why would you go with that well I did bring on John Watson and he can play a defensive mid role Martin McNiff of course already can play a defensive mid role and I want to try and give both of them a little more playing time and I feel like this is going to be the best way we can do that now taking a look at the starting lineup it's going to be actually it's going to be rotating goalkeepers as I said before Greg Fleming is going to be a net today flatback four of Hovarth McNulty Gibson and Alexander the defensive mid for now will be McNiff two center mids of Rennie and Downey the two wingers will be, well, they're not brothers, but the O'Brien guys, Kenny and Darren, and sitting up front, Andy McKinnon. Let's kick off, see what happens, and let's see if we can keep this unbeaten run going. Five matches, let's try and make it six. All right, and we kick off. Of course, we're going to be in the black and white hoops. East Sterling shirt, orange and black, so they don't kick clash, because they are also white and black. But uh, if we win this match, we will still stay in fourth place. If we lose, we may drop down uh, to fifth place just because Albion Rovers are that close to us. I believe they are a point behind us in the table. Five minutes on so far and not a lot of action. East Sterlingshire have only taken a shot. We need to try and get some space through the middle. Downey to Rennie. Can't find any space, so we bring it out onto the wing. Alexander tries to throw it forward, but in the end nothing going on that maybe we can get a little uh, defensive action here as East Sterling Shore now starting to build some momentum and getting some movement into our area Ooh, good save and good tackle away forcing the corner defensively not very solid maybe we can force something here we're keeping him back in their area East Sterling Shore it's over the top and it's found McKinnon was McKinnon on side did he beat the trap? He did. Queens Park up 1-0 after 11 minutes after a long, long ball forward. Finds McKinnon, who was barely on side. And one of their players going out injured right now. Good team talk just to encourage the boys after a half hour goes by. Relatively even shots-wise, three shots apiece. And all three of these Sterlingshire shots have been on target. Only two of ours have. But we come to halftime, it's one all, or not one all, it's one nil to us. Um, we're doing okay so far. Definitely room for improvement. Defensively, you're doing fine. Midfielders, uh, you guys are doing fine. And sitting up front, uh, you could um, you could do a little better. McKinnon, I believe that was your only shot on target today. But I believe you got what it takes to do even better. So let's kick off for the second 45. We start with the ball, and let's hold on to this lead. Remember, we are still riding a five-game unbeaten streak, and another one of their players goes out injured, which is beneficial to us as it forces them to use their subs early. But we are riding a five-game unbeaten streak. Can we make it six? 56 minutes gone. We get a throw in from the left side. Rennie to Downey to McNiff trying to throw it forward. Oh, we do get it back. Downey gets it through to McKinnon, who turns around defender, takes a shot, low worm burner across the ground, and that's McKinnon's second goal of the day. 2-0 to Queens Park after 57 minutes. Absolutely great play, what I'm seeing right here. This switch up to this formation, definitely helping out. And with, uh, it's a free kick to East Sterling Shirts it's in the box. Thought for sure that there was going to be a penalty there for East Sterlingshire because of all the pushing I saw. They're still going. Oh, and they managed to find one back. Jeez. 
be Sterling Shore with a goal somehow, to be quite honest with you. I couldn't even see what caused that. But it's a goal, and it's now 2-1 to one as they dig into our lead. So let's go and make some changes. McNiff's going to come out for John Watson. He's going to make his debut for the club. And as far as who else I can put in, defensively, McLean is going to be coming in for Michael Alexander, mostly because he hasn't played all that well, and I don't have any other defensive wings that I could put back there. I'm going to save Ross Doherty in case uh, Callum Hovarth gets a little tired. But for now, McLean coming in on the left. 17 minutes left to go. And I'm just going to encourage the boys a little bit more. Try and get them to push a little bit more forth and forward. With eight minutes to go, I don't like seeing Christian Gibson hurt. So Ross McCrory is going to come in for him. That's, that's a panic sub right there. So I just need to ride out these next seven minutes and hope. Hope and pray that East Sterling sure don't do anything. That's looking like it could. They got a deep throw in. Ball forward. We do clear it out. Darren O'Brien to McKinnon. Unfortunately, McKinnon can't hold on to that. He's on a hat trick, so maybe he can he, maybe he can still get a chance here. We get the ball. McKinnon trying to drive. Can't find any space through the middle. Gets it out wide. Now passing back through the middle. McKinnon to Rennie to Darren O'Brien. Takes a nice, solid shot, but the keeper parries that away. Very solid defensive play right there. Three minutes left, and East Sterlingshire with a corner. And they're going to get another corner out of it. As it was very nervy in the box. The ball pinballing around between defenders. Still pinballing around. Good clearance. And we pick up and clear the danger. Three minutes of stoppage time left to go. And all we need to do is just close this down. Counter. Get rid of all these. Play wider stuff. Drop deeper. Pass in space. Don't do that. And tell everyone to tighten up. Play more narrow. For the last three minutes of this match, and they've all come and gone. Connor Rennie with a free kick. That was probably the final kick of the game. And there it is, full time. Queens Park defeating East Sterlingshire 2-1. And that brings our undefeated streak to six games. Good win, boys. Very good win. We stay in fourth place because of that, though Albion Rovers are still a point behind us, so we need to continue watching out for that. Forfar are now just five points ahead of us. Cowdenbeath, seven, and Burrick, ten. That's a really even match throughout. Even shots, even on target. We had more possession. I think with this formation, it will cause us to get a little bit more control and have the ball under control a little bit more rather than using the 5-2-3 all the time, which is all-out attack all the time. Yeah, but there it is, and there are the rest of the results to Martin being Turf. Turf look really really helpless this entire season so more than likely they are going down and Albion Rovers being Clyde that's why they are still sticking with us everyone else looks okay so let's take a look at the schedule and when are we going to be coming back oh actually uh, we're right near the end of the season we just have 11 matches left so that means the next two matches when we're going to be coming back will be the last two of the season Albion Rovers and Morton Albion Rovers home and Morton away Hopefully we'll still be in the promotion playoff zone when we get to that. Otherwise, it'll definitely be an interesting match day to try and see us fight to stay up in that zone or to fight back into that zone, depending on how the, uh, the next few matches go. But until that time, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Comments, suggestions, questions, anything else, please leave in the comment box below. But as always, this is Gendo. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and peace out.